Well, I'm John Bachman. Hi, everybody. I'm Bianca Della Garza. Well, tensions remain high between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia after OPEC Plus's decision to cut oil productions. Let's go to Jerusalem correspondent Daniel Cohen, who has more on that story. President Biden begging OPEC to help the Democrats avoid a wipeout in the midterms. The Saudis dropped a bombshell Thursday, saying the administration suggested delaying a decision to reduce output by 2 million barrels a day until after Americans cast their ballots. Saudi Arabia firing back at President Biden. The Saudi foreign ministry saying the administration reached out and pleaded for OPEC to delay cutting back output by one month until after the elections. Regarding the cuts, the White House has accused the Saudis of siding with Russia, a suggestion the kingdom brushed off, saying the OPEC decision was based on economics, not politics. The Saudis need to come to their senses. They have committed a humongous blunder. The pushback from Saudi Arabia comes as Democrats threaten the Saudis with an ultimatum. Reverse the OPEC rollback now or face a one-year freeze on all arms sales. And so what galls many of us in Congress is the ingratitude. It's the ingratitude. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal and California Congressman Ro Khanna have introduced legislation to stop all sales of U.S. weapons and logistical support. Here's Congressman Khanna explaining why he believes the Saudis owe the United States. We have done so much for Saudi Arabia. I mean, the first President Bush basically sent troops to the Middle East to make sure Saddam Hussein didn't invade the Saudis when the troops were in Kuwait. When asked on Wednesday if he supports the arms legislation, President Biden said this. We're going to react to Saudi Arabia. And they're going to a consultation when they come back, and uh, we will take action. Republicans say the answer to America's skyrocketing pump prices is right under our feet. Dozens of GOP members say the president should focus less on Saudi oil and more on production here at home. With less than a month before the midterms, the number one issue for voters is, you guessed it, the economy. And every major poll shows voters trust Republicans more than Democrats. Whether it leads to a red tsunami or a red wave is a little tricky to predict. But polls across the country are showing the wave is gathering. John, Bianca, back to you. Daniel, thank you. So is Saudi Arabia telling the truth here? Mm. Bloomberg host Jonathan Farrow asked White House National Economic Council Director Brian Deese, and this was just yesterday, to respond to the Saudi government. And here's what Deese had to say. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. With inflation at its highest level in 40 years and interest rates skyrocketing, your retirement plans are in danger. Well, our friends at American Hartford Gold can help show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Yeah. If you call them right now, they have a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order. So don't wait. Call now. Here's the number. 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text. Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532. Look, I'm not going to. I'm not going to to, to uh, get on, on on air and disclose private conversations that but members it's not of our private. administration the have have shared it with us. With You've got the opportunity to say it's true or not. Is it true or not? What I will say. What I will say. What I will say clearly is that the communications that we've had with OPEC members and continuing have been based on our assessment of the economic circumstances of supply and demand in global oil markets. Interesting so, response. Yeah, do you buy that? Because, the, you know, the accusation here is Biden asked them to hold off on the production cut so it didn't make the price go any higher before the midterms. They're obviously a little touchy about the price of oil now and the price of gasoline. And uh, they took so much credit for falling gas prices not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And, and I think we all recall this big epic meeting with MBS. And, you know, it was talked about that they were going over there hat in hand talking about oil. Uh, so it's definitely interesting to hear Dee sort of trying to say we're not going to disclose private uh, private conversations and repeating himself a little bit there. I think but he was caught the, off guard. Haven't the Saudis already disclosed the private conversations by releasing the statement? Pretty much. Um, also, you, you might remember back in September, we told you about President Biden reportedly offering to buy barrels of oil for 80 dollars each to restock the strategic petroleum reserve. Some say this is also a so-called quid pro quo and more enticement or attempted enticement by the Biden administration 
to gain favor with the Saudis after he called them a pariah state. But obviously, uh, this attempt didn't work either. Let's contrast that with the energy policies of President Trump. In March of 2020, President Trump proposed purchasing 77 million barrels of oil to fill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to its maximum capacity, but uh, congressional Democrats, led by Chuck Schumer, blocked it. They called it a $3 billion bailout for big oil. Here's the thing, though. A barrel of oil in March of 2020 would have cost the U.S. government $32 for each barrel compared to the $80 per barrel that Joe Biden wanted to pay, according to that report back in September. So. Yeah, another Trump era policy where we're looking back on like, hmm, OK, yes. where we were then, where we are now. And the weird thing is, is it seems like these energy policies from the Biden administration benefit our adversaries and help no one here in this country. Not, not a one. And, let's, you know, let's that's talk the issue here. Yeah, for let's the talk more about this and welcome in former foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump and national security expert Dr. Walid Ferris. Dr. Ferris, great to see you again. Thank you for having me today. Uh, we wanted to take a look first at part of the statement from the Saudis, which basically confirms what Brian Deese wouldn't. The Saudis, or the kingdom rather, stresses that while it strives to preserve the strength of its relations with all friendly countries, it affirms its rejection of any dictates, actions, or efforts to distort its noble objectives to protect the global economy from oil market volatility. Resolving economic challenges requires the establishment of a non-politicized, that's kind of the key term here, constructive dialogue and to wisely and rationally consider what serves the interest of all countries. We've said this before. There, there are basically two choices the U.S. president, whether it's this one or other presidents, has to make. Do you favor the Saudis or do you favor the Iranians in the Middle East? And we know that this administration wants to do business with the Iranians. They, they keep pursuing the Iran nuclear deal. And the cost of that is being thwarted by the Saudis. Look, we have, as the United States, a relationship with the Saudis. There are tensions between this administration and this leadership in Saudi Arabia. But, you know, President Biden was in Jeddah. He was at a conference that he qualified as excellent. There were the Saudis and the other oil producers. That should have been the moment where he would have negotiated what he wanted to negotiate, not one month before midterm elections. But that's on the side. In reality, Iran is actually in the posture of being... A, a, a opposing enemy to the United States. There is, there is no even option here. It's, of course, we need to be with our allies. We need to rectify the problems, and we need to make sure that Iranian terror is disarmed across the Middle East. That's a question of principle. And we want to also bring into the conversation uh, retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel and President of the London Center for Policy Research, uh, Lieutenant uh, Colonel hey, Tony Schaefer. Thanks for joining us as well. As we look Thanks at this. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, you know, this conversation is, is vital because we had Brian Deese just moments ago. Why can't he answer the question? If Saudi Arabia is telling the truth, why not, uh, you know, kind of fess up here and just be more transparent? Don't Americans deserve transparency? Well, we do. And I think it's both the hypocrisy of the situation regarding the fact that uh, they accused President Trump of the quid pro quo regarding Ukraine. So uh, to admit that uh, the circumstances in this case are clearly uh, more, uh, I think, directly political by the fact that Bianca, he only wanted them to delay this by a month. He wanted to delay the pain till after the election. And secondly, the, the answer remains to all of the issues we're facing right now, uh, the issues with Ukraine and Russia and energy, the issues with inflation and continued expansion of, of the pain that people are paying here. It's all about the energy. Uh, Bianca, this could all be resolved. The issue regarding Saudi Arabia, the issue regarding Russia would quickly be resolved if he just reopened the entire energy industry. If we could supply all the oil and all the gas to the world that we have available, to it would drop the market prices down it helped the american people it would it would take any power away from the saudis because we would be exporting and not depend on them and most importantly if you're really concerned about defeating putin it would drop the, the bottom out of the energy market and deprive him of the resource he's using to drive his war which is oil revenue from his country and we could do all that by opening the spigots of our own oil oil resources i don't know why anyone in the administration isn't listening to that we hear that over and over <laughs> we're like a broken record here and i've been to saudi arabia they know that they are the gas tank here the oil and they they have that leverage right? over us they know that and you know when biden said oh we opened up some airways and path flights that's why we went over there we no one's buying that okay they could they could get between 
places just fine there. And, you know, he tried to say that was part of the mission of why he went over. Uh, it was just really disingenuous. And I think people are just getting so sick of this. And